welcome back to my channel and a really warm welcome if you are new to my channel today. My name is Gemma and I have a 20 month old son called Oscar. We've just recently moved from Dubai to Cork in Ireland and in this week's video I'm going to show you our very new playroom. Now if you have been following me for a while you will know that I did a playroom makeover uh, back in September last year so I'll link that above now if you want to go see that one. Uh, and so in this week's video, I'm going to change it up a little bit from what I did last time and also show you how I do my toy rotation. Lots of you ask, based on my schema videos, how I um, choose toys to put out, how I store them, how I rotate them, how often I rotate them uh, to keep everything fresh. So I will also go through that. So the first part of this week's video, I'm going to show you what we were working with when we moved in and as you can see what we have now uh, there is a few lovely new additions to our playroom that we didn't have in Dubai so I'm very very pleased and there is some more new additions to come and there'll be upcoming videos on that anyway so let's get into this week's video I'm going to start with showing you what we moved into and then how we got to this and then at the end of this uh, video I will also show you how I store all the toys that you don't see out now and how I rotate them. I really hope you enjoy this week's video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and I think YouTube are still blocking my comment section so if you can't write me a comment it's not me, uh, it's YouTube. Uh, so head over to my Instagram which is at the way we play and we can chat there. Uh, so definitely go do that and if you're not following me over on Instagram definitely do because I post nearly every day. <laughs> anyway let's get into this week's video. Okay, so this is the playroom as it stands. So it's a really good space, obviously. It's a bit bigger than what we had in Dubai. And it's why we chose this house, so that we could have this separate space downstairs. It's got all of these built-in shelves. So this is gonna be where I'm gonna store all the toys that are in rotation. And then at the bottom shelves, he's able to access. So that'll be his things that are out. At the moment, we're still waiting on our Shipping from Dubai, so it's got what we, our minimal supplies are on there that he is getting quite bored of. Um, I have purchased the IKEA doll's house, so that's new, and then everything else I've had before. So far, all I've done in this room is painted the wall. It is a uh, light gray, and it's just this wall. Was thinking about doing the end wall, but I think it doesn't really need to be done, although the wall is a bit dirty, but I'm thinking we're going to put our unit on there anyway, so it will cover it up. Um, but maybe we'll just repaint it white. And so um, the fireplace we've got in here, does, it's not a working fire, but um, it's a nice feature. And then this is just a plain armchair in here. And then around here is like another standalone unit, which at the moment has all of his nappy supplies. Um, I don't put anything on this shelf at the moment because he can reach it. Uh, so I don't know if that's gonna stay or what. So yeah, so this is the space so far. And this is what we are working with for a, uh, our playroom. the finished playroom as it's been for about the last week to 10 days so I'm due a toy rotation so what I'll do is I'll take you around what the playroom looks like now and then I'll show you how I do my toy rotation so I'll start on this side of the room this armchair was already in the house we're renting so we just have to put up with some of the furniture so I've just bought a throw and a cushion to make it nice and I really love this color anyway and I plan to have kind of greens and greys and mustard. So that worked really well. So we painted the wall gray and then these kind of accent colors. Then down here is Oscar's car. Anything that I mention that I possibly can link, I will put in the description box for you. 
he got this for Christmas. Then he has a, just a wicker basket full of his soft toys. These aren't all of them, but they're kind of the ones out at the moment. Panda and Rabbit seem to be the flavour of the month. And on the wall here, just for mark making, we've got a chalkboard, which has finally gone up. We had it in Dubai, but it never went up on the wall. We just never got round to it. Uh, and some jumbo chalk and cloth. And then here is our trusty unit, which is amazing for just laying out different activities. Some of these have got a bit stale, so I'm gonna be changing them in my toy rotation. So I won't go into too much detail as yet, but you can kind of see what's there. Over here, I really love this area now. In here is uh, all soft things that he can throw. So it's sponge balls and rubber balls. And in that bag there is uh, bean bags. So if he happens to enter into a trajectory schema and I'm not aware of it, he's got things there that I know that he can throw and will be okay inside. Here we have the IKEA house, which is like a book, it's advertised for it as a bookshelf, but we also use it as a house. So we can pull the books off and put our little people in, but it's really handy for books. Oscar is really into reading now, so he's upped how many books he needs out at a time, because he can go through so many. So this isn't all of our books, I'll show you where the rest are, but this is a selection. And then up here, and this is my top tip for a playroom, is bring everything down to your child's height. So as you can see, <laughs> at adult height, we haven't got a lot going on because it's his room. And can you imagine living in a house where all the pictures and things were way above your head and you couldn't see what they were? So bring them down real low to their level. So here is just a wireframe that I got from Pennies or Primark. And it's just got pictures of our family so that he, you know, he can spot them and talk about them. He loves that. This I got from Etsy. It's beautiful woolen um, feathers on a copper ring. I think the lady is called Fluffy Peaks, but I'll link her down below. Beautiful, beautiful things. And then here is two pictures. I got the frames from Flying Tiger and the pictures are just taken from his favourite book called Sweep. And they're lovely, lovely illustrations and they've got all different uh, modes of transport on this double page. So literally everything you could possibly think of, vans, cars, buses, trains, hot air balloons, etc. So they're really lovely to look at and ponder and point out. Then over here, we have, we've got our Buzzy Bee pull along toy and then this is like our little kitchen. So you don't have to have a kitchen. So this is really useful at the moment. He doesn't need a full size play kitchen. He's quite happy. So he's got pots and pans, a little pot of uh, lids to do mixing. And then down below is all these kind of fruits and vegetables and foods, like his little pantry. And then up here, we have a really deep windowsills. So that's really nice. So we've got a fake plant again, another one of those books and his copper O. And then last bit is we've got this beautiful, really thick piled rug, which is nice and soft because we've got a new addition to our playroom, which is a wobble board, which is great for gross motor and getting rid of, you know, energy with it when you have to be indoors. So we're loving our wobble board and our Fagus truck, which I've featured before, beautiful German wooden truck, really well made. I'll go over to this bit in a minute. So just finally over here is a big long radiator. So I don't tend to put anything over here because we do have it on, it gets quite warm. Uh, so we don't really need to encourage him over here. So I've just got his bricks, which he takes what he needs and moves over. And then down here is kind of his cleaning things, his mop and bucket, his broom and his dustpan and brush. And then in this bucket is all random pieces of recycling that he might want to use for playing with. So there's like egg cartons and boxes and anything that I think is quite interesting goes in there. And then this unit is actually uh, just for his cloth nappies. Just uh, some baskets at the top and all his nappies and things I need to make up and his wipes are down there. And then our light fitting is a beautiful copper, hammered copper uh, metal light fitting which releases this wonderful like warm glow light. So it's really nice and calming in here. I'll link this, I got this from Amazon and it, is, it was a real bargain and really nice. And then over here we have built in storage. So this was really, really handy. In Dubai we used to have a cupboard to store all the toys that were in out of rotation. And here we have these built in kind of uh, bookcase. Oscar can only reach 
the bottom two. So those are set up for him to access. And then the top four is where I store all the things that aren't out. So I'll quickly go through the bottom. Uh, so at the moment we just have loose parts and a shopping basket. These are his library books. We're really happy to be able to access a library now so we keep them separate. And then puzzles are down the bottom. So he has two puzzles to work on and he tends to work on them just there or sometimes if I'm in the room he'll pull them over to me and we'll do it together. And then up here, and I'll go through this in a bit more detail and you've, you've seen me kind of organise this. So those are the books that aren't out. So we do have quite a few books. We've got some upstairs in his bedroom, some in our bedroom. Those are ones that aren't out at the moment. He has library books as well. So books are everywhere basically. So those are just being stored. That is a box of boxes. So containers and things that we need. I'll go through what's in all of those. And then along here, you will have seen, I did a video on how to entertain your toddler on an aeroplane and I use uh, these things. So they just stay there. So if we're going out to a restaurant or something, they're there for me to grab and I have switched out some of the activities for other things, but it's just keeping that fresh so he has things to do. Foam matting, just random gifts that we've been given. This is a tray full of lentils. So um, we get that out every so often and the big jar. Over here is where all the extra puzzles and things are stored. Puzzles are really difficult to store, but stacking and then chucking in the corner is basically how we're storing them at the moment. And then these are much more organized and I will show you uh, exactly how I do that. And then train set and our way to play car track and some more chalk. And then down here, I have one of these little units. This is all kind of craft supplies, so paper, oil cloth. And then in here, we have paint, paint brushes, rollers, stampers. This one is lolly sticks, pipe cleaners, ribbons, uh, and my magnetic wand and counters. And this one is all the kind of scoop things that would go with this, this kind of activity where you've got kind of pasta or rice or lentils, so scoops and sieves and things like that, tongs. This one is uh, felt pens, this one is colouring pencils, and the last one has scissors, rubber bands and glitter glue. So nothing that he would access on his own, I would get things out. And then here are things that need to go up in his bedroom and that's a little container that I haven't got out at the moment. So if we start from this end, I have this, which I really love, but I've actually got nothing to put in it at the moment. So it is just a box of boxes and containers. So I've got some of these Ikea dividers and uh, these that are really good for keeping like puzzle pieces in. I think they were from some bed sheets or something. Um, I'm a bit of a hoarder. And then these bags, they're like Amazon gift bags. So they're just handy to keep for if you need to sort anything else out. So that's a box of organisation. Then in this container, which is from Ikea, is basically just jam-packed. Oh, do I want to open it? Of scarves. Um, different size scarves, different colours. And then these three boxes I've organised into... Uh, so this one is animals and people. So I've got my little family and I'll link everything in the description box below uh, as much as I can. There's like finger puppets, there's a, uh, what's it called, Russian doll. That's the inside of it. Um, his ear's broken off, it's inside of him so I need to fix that. Uh, in here is like those little wooden people. Oh. Focus, focus, <laughs> focus, there you go. The, like a whole family of wooden people. And then I've also got my fake grass for like small world play. So that's animals and people and grass. <laughs> this one is like activities. So more than just um, like a thing that, that you actually do something with it. So it's like the shape sorter, this little puzzle block thing. Here's lacing cheese, that's Melissa and Doug ball slammy thing the color matching eggs and one of those like twizzling on the one of those things <laughs> whatever they're called uh, I think that's it for that one so that's more just like 
activities. And then this one is uh, vehicles of all sorts. Some of them have been given to us and I, I just don't like throwing things away, but they probably need to be culled a bit like this. Um, he picked up from his grandparents' house and he likes it. It doesn't make any noise, but it's there at the moment. Um, this needs to be fixed. There's a bit of Duplo in here. Um, and then some like wooden trucks and things. So that's just to kind of mix and match his vehicles. So that's all pretty simple. And then this one is a bit more manic. <laughs> But there is, it's organised chaos. So if I just take out this top layer of things, that might be more useful to see what's in there. Okay, so I've filled this box with those IKEA dividers. They don't fit quite, quite well, but you know, they're fine. And so in here I have, well, here, this bit here is like random containers, which is useful. One for just learning how to open containers. Um, I was going through, through a real phase where that was a thing, but also just storing things. So that's just like loose containers and baskets of things. Um, I guess this one is stacking cups. He has a stacking set in the bath at the moment, so we just switch those out. Uh, more pom-poms, because you know how much I love a pom-pom. Some funnels, and then loads of these pouch lids. Uh, he has some out at the moment, so they're just all the extra ones. Then in here is like little containers to practice like opening uh, different things with zips and then there is some like cards In this one is just random bits of mega blocks. That's all we own <laughs> And uh, the ribbons that go in his ribbon jar and then in this one is like a random selection of stuff for messy play so it's like sponges and sieves and spoons and things that didn't fit anywhere else and then, so then I'm just laying on top. This is like extra musical instruments. They're all the kind of plasticky ones that we've got. We don't tend to have them out as much, but if we have people over, we'll crack out a few more musical instruments if we need to. Um, this I can't bear to get rid of <laughs> because Oscar used to love this as a baby. Uh, so I'm keeping it. Um, this, <laughs> he loves learning to open that. So I won't throw it out just yet. And we've got some of our bristle blocks which at the moment. And then these are just the lids and more pots, containery things that uh, the lids are, the pots are already out. So that is the extent of my organization. So Oscar's playroom has been like this, as I say, for about a week to ten days and some of the things that are out are getting a bit stale so now I feel like it's time to do a bit of a toy rotation so I thought I would show you how I do that. So the first thing you need to do is observe your child and see first of all what isn't being played with, what hasn't been touched. I tend to tidy away at the end of every day and so you can kind of tell which things literally haven't been touched especially if you lay out your playroom in this sort of way where there's an individual thing on each uh, shelf you can come back to the shelf the following evening and it is perfectly exactly how you left it you know that's an item that needs to be changed out so that's one thing you need to do is just watch to see what isn't being played with and then the next thing is to look at what is being played with so Oscar is really interested I've observed in uh, doing his puzzles at the moment doing activities that require lots of fine motor skills He's uh, getting much more able to concentrate for longer periods of time. So activities that involve smaller movements, he's really beginning to enjoy. And he's still really enjoying colours. And he's showing me that he has a real interest in that at the moment. So although when I first did the playroom, I'd already observed that, that colours were uh, high on his agenda. So a lot of the activities already out focus on colour. I'm going to try and beef that up a little bit and add a few more activities that involve colour. I've also noticed this morning, uh, before I filmed this, I just had to do a bit of a tidy up and he had this shopping basket out in the living room full of ra a random selection of things. He had a couple of cars, he had the chalks from his chalkboard, he had some blocks, wooden blocks from his thing and it was all out in the uh, living room. So he's currently 
transporting and he has been for a few days now so I'm going to make sure that I've got lots of loose parts out for him to transport and that they're in a convenient location so that he can access containers and loose parts together. So I've shown you what is out now I'm just going to quickly do my toy rotation and then I'll show you what I've switched out and what I've put in and I hope that will help you to see how I do my toy rotation. I'm not strict on how often I do it so like I say it's been a week to ten days sometimes I can go two to three weeks if I've got it spot on and the schemas are still in play and things haven't changed too much or sometimes they need to be changed every week so for me it's much more organic and I just work with Oscar's interests and what I've noticed I am a stay-at-home mum so obviously I can pick up on these things much more easily than if I was working because I'm with him all the time so I do know people that have set boxes that they organize and so each time they do a toy rotation they switch out a box they put all this kind of stuff in a box that goes away and the new box comes out so that is a different way to do it i prefer to do it my way purely because i feel like i can access exactly oscar's interests and really focus the activities on what is uh interesting him at that time. So I'm going to show you my toy rotation and then I will show you what the playroom looks like after. Okay so these are the things that have got stale basically that I'm taking away. So I had this little cutlery tray out that had pom-poms and loose parts and things in and he played with them for the first couple of days and then it's just been left. So I've as you can see taken some of the bits out but this is going to go away. The musical instruments I had in a basket and he, like I say, had a day where he was interested and then hasn't touched them since. So I've, as you can see, I've removed some. These two uh, cars haven't been played with at all. Neither have the animals, so they're going. The scarves, I've taken some of them out, but they haven't really been played with either. And I've just taken the two biggest rocks away. So not too much has gone stale, but then I'll just quickly show you how I've changed things up. Okay, so to encourage a bit more use of the musical instruments, I've just taken four different things out and I've laid them out on the shelf to make them a bit more interesting. So we'll see if that makes a difference. Down here we have his three favourite stuffed animals and I've just tied a little uh, coloured scarf around each of their necks. So he has been playing with the scarves and trying to wrap up the animals, so like an enveloping schema. So I'm just kind of prompting that situation. And then here I had out just the orange pegs because he orange is like the colour that he is obsessed with that's the one he definitely knows so now I've just updated it to having one of each of the colors and in each of the sizes so I will show him how to use this and we'll talk about the colors but just to encourage more of the other colors to come into play uh, again with colors I've got out his shape sorter he hasn't seen this since we left Dubai so it's like two months so we'll see how he gets on with that this activity I bought ages ago and it's just always been too hard, so I'm gonna try him out with it. I have three different pieces, and they um, go from you know fairly easy to put on and then up to quite difficult to put on. So I've limited it because there's actually five pieces for each section, so I've just removed all of the other pieces, and also I've just kept with the colors that we are, so orange he definitely knows, blue he's getting there, and red he isn't sure about. I think it's too close to orange. So having them in an activity, hopefully we can talk about that. And then here I've just, because I said about him being more interested in kind of puzzles, I've got his animal puzzles out. I've just picked three of them rather than having everything out or the box. A little tip is if you ever have puzzles out, don't have them already done. Um, it's very easy to think or oh, just stick out the puzzle and if you know can you imagine going to like a thousand piece puzzle and it's already been completed it's not going to encourage you to want to do it so have them laid out undone and then as I said he's in a bit of a transporting schema so I've taken some of those loose parts so I've taken the grab out rings and the rocks the smaller rocks and I've just left it with the basket so he can do what he pleases with that and then down here I've just made a very quick activity with an egg carton so I've taken some of the pom-poms that were 
in this tray that weren't really being used. And I've just quickly turned it into a little activity. I've just got some colours, felt tip pens on a bit of piece of paper <laughs> and matched with the coloured pom-poms. Looks a bit like a very Eastery activity, doesn't it? So he can match the colour to the right section sort of thing. So I'll have to show him how to do that, but we'll see how he gets on. But again, working with colours because that's his interest at the moment. Over here, I haven't changed really much up. This was over on the other side and I've put it here because it just gives me a bit more space to actually get the pieces on without having to pull it all down. And then I've literally just switched these over just to freshen them up because he's still playing with them. And uh, oh, a tip here is again, like I say, always remove the pieces. And if you've got lots of little baskets, that's really helpful. And I always put on the top, if it's a puzzle that's a bit more tricky to do independently, which this one is, um, he finds this one much easier to do. I always put kind of on the top the piece that he's much more successful with. So one, this is orange and he really loves orange. But two, it's one of the easier pieces to get in. So I leave that on the top because that kind of gives him that little boost of success. That, oh, okay, I can do this. And then I might go for an additional piece. So that's another little tip as well. So that's the end of this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to head over to my Instagram if you can't comment here and let me know what your favourite bit was or if you've got any questions. I'd love to uh, hear it and chat with you guys. And I will see you again next week. Bye. <laughs>